game plan is we're going to talk about this lab and what the reaction looks like. In this lab, we're going to be using potatoes because potatoes have an enzyme in them that's also inside of your cells. What was that enzyme called when you just read this lab? That's also inside your cells. Starts with a C. Somebody just got close. Cat. Catalase. Catalase. Catalase enzyme. Perfect. These potatoes have catalase enzyme in them. That catalase enzyme is also in your cells. Catalase has a very specific job. What that enzyme catalase does is it takes H2O2 and it breaks it up into H2O plus O2. That's the job that that enzyme does. What is O2? What is that? Wow. Oxygen. Oxygen. What's H2O? Water. Water. What's H2O2? Water. Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Some of you guys might be sitting there like, I'm not really sure what hydrogen peroxide is. But I guarantee you that every one of you knows it. What if I showed you this bottle? Yeah. When you were a kid, you fell down riding your bike, you got a little boo-boo. Mom and dad took you inside and they poured this on your cut and you screamed because it hurt. That hydrogen peroxide was what was cleaning your cut. We're gonna talk a little bit more about those cuts in just a second. Can you close that please? Now, when we look at this reaction, we put our H2O2, our hydrogen peroxide in with the enzyme. That enzyme is what does all the work. It's what's going to take that H2O2 and rip it apart. The enzyme does the job. But we need to get that enzyme from somewhere. Where are we getting that enzyme from in this lab? Where do we get the enzyme from? What's it inside of? Potatoes. Potatoes. We get the enzyme <coughs> from potatoes. So... Here's our enzyme. There it is. There's our blended up potatoes. Mmm. It's potatoes and water all mixed together. Yummy, yummy. If anybody wants to try it, it's probably super healthy. Also, super gross. It smells worse than it looks. Okay? Here's how we're going to get our enzyme. But let's think about what this reaction is going to look like. <coughs> Our enzyme's in here. We're also going to use hydrogen peroxide. O2, oxygen. Is that a liquid or a gas? Yes. gas? It's a gas. What do gases like to do? Rise. Rise. So what do you think that oxygen's going to try to do? It's going to try to rise. That's really important when we look at this. Because when we take this potato, we put the hydrogen peroxide in there. That enzyme is going to start working to rip it all apart. When it rips it apart, we see those oxygen bubbles rise up. That's how we know it's working. That's how we know it's working. Questions so far? So what this lab looks at is how can we change how fast this enzyme works? How can we change the speed of the reaction? Now we learned when we did enzymes that there's a couple ways to do that. We can change the temperature that enzyme works at. We can change the pH that enzyme works at. Or we can change the concentration of the enzyme. What's another word for concentration? Starts with an A. Spencer. <coughs> amount. The amount of the enzyme. Those are the things that we can manipulate to change the speed of this reaction. What we're going to focus on right now is I'm going to pretend that my experiment 
we're going to look at changing the temperature of the reaction just to give you guys a demo. Because remember, when we do an experiment, how many things are we allowed to change at a time? One. One. That's it. So we're going to focus on temperature for this time. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this test tube, and I've got to get some enzyme in there. So I've got to get some potato out of this guy. There's a couple different ways that we can measure the amount of potato that goes in. Because if we're only changing the temperature, we need to think about our constants, things that need to be kept the same. If one test tube is all the way full with potato, and this one only has two drops of potato, could that make a big difference? Yes. Yeah, so we've got to control that. We've got to keep it constant. That's one of the things we need to worry about. So I've got two ways for you to measure the amount of potato you use. The first one is this guy right here. What's this called? Scale. Not a scale, a balance. A balance, it's a little different than a scale. I'm gonna tell you guys the biggest mistake that people will make is they're gonna put their little weigh boat on there, put the potato in, and say, it still says zero. There's stuff on here, why isn't it working? got to take the cover off. I guarantee you three people will do this. Three people will do this tomorrow. You've got to take the cover off. Okay? You put your little weigh boat on there. You hit the zero button because we don't want to know how much the weigh boat weighs. We just want to know how much the potato weighs because that's what goes in the test tube. You put your potato on here and you can dump it into the test tube. That's one way. You can choose to do that tomorrow. That's not a problem. But I'm going to show you the faster way today so we can get to work. The faster way to do this is to just use our pipettes like we've been doing. If I do this the right way, how much liquid gets sucked up into this pipette? One milliliter. One milliliter. So I know every time I use this, I'm getting one milliliter of potato. So I take my pipette, I stick it in that gunk of the potato, and I suck it up. Mmm, there it is. Yum. Yeah, yum. Here it is, here's my potato gunk. Now what I've done is I put the enzyme into this test tube. Why is nothing happening with this potato? What is it missing? Look at the equation, what is it missing? It doesn't have any hydrogen peroxide in it. When you took that enzyme test, do enzymes work on just anything? Or do they only work on one specific thing? One specific thing, lock and key. So we need to put the right thing in here for the enzyme to work. We need that hydrogen peroxide. Lucky for us, I've got it right here. When we take this hydrogen peroxide and we put it in this tube, what are we going to expect to start seeing? Bubbles. Bubbles. Because that oxygen gas is trying to get out. It's rising. We're going to start seeing bubbles. That's how we know this reaction is going to work. What we're going to focus on for your experiment is how long this test tube bubbles. We're going to look at how long this test tube bubbles. Before we go any further, are there questions about what we're doing? Okay, ready? So I take my hydrogen peroxide. To make sure this is really exaggerated, I'm gonna put a lot of hydrogen peroxide in this tube right now. You do not need to put this much in. I just wanna make sure it's very easy for us to see right now. I'm gonna take a whole milliliter of hydrogen peroxide and put it in this tube. You don't need nearly that much. What you do need is to make sure the amount of this you put in stays the same every single time. This must stay the same. It has to, has to, has to. You cannot change it. So I take my hydrogen peroxide and I shoot it into the tube. What we're gonna see now as I walk around, is if you look at the bottom of the tube, you see it bubbling. You see the bubbles? See it bubbling up? 
That's what we're looking for. We're watching that enzyme work. We can see it working by the bubbles coming up inside of the tube. We all see the bubbles rising out of the liquid. Okay? That's our go-to. Ooh, bubbles. Right? Bill Nye the science guy. Bubbles. There it is. Super science. We just did it. What's important to do now is not look at the bubbles. What are we supposed to be keeping track of? What did I tell you we need to focus on? Go ahead. How long the substance bubbles? How long it bubbles for. So this whole time I put the hydrogen peroxide in, I've got a timer out on my phone. And I'm timing how long it takes those bubbles to go away. <coughs> I'm seeing how long does this bubble for. How long do bubbles keep rising up? Let's pretend that I saw bubbles rise up for 13 seconds, and then they stopped. We got 13 seconds of bubbles. We record that number down. We need to keep track of how long it bubbles for. Are you guys with me so far? <coughs> Here's why we need to keep track of that. When we look at this, how long it bubbles for is really how long this reaction happens for. Because as soon as that reaction stops, we don't get any more oxygen. So the bubbles stop. That's why we time this. If every time we put the same amount of hydrogen peroxide in that tube, the bubbles stop because there's no more of this left. The enzyme used all of it. It broke it all apart. There's nothing left for it to work on. So, the reaction stops. What's the job of enzymes? What do they do? Speed up the reaction. Enzymes speed up reactions. So if we're looking to see how can we make this enzyme work best, we want to see how can we make this reaction the fastest. I'm going to put two numbers on the board. Our first test was 13 seconds. The second time, I take this and I screw with the temperature. So I take my hot plate, our old friend, and a water bath. I take a test tube, I put the same amount of potato, the same amount of hydrogen peroxide in, but this time it's sitting in a hot water bath. The second time I do this experiment, I notice that it bubbles for 25 seconds. It was the same amount of hydrogen peroxide. It was the same amount of potato. Look at the equation. The reaction ends and the bubbling stops when we run out of this guy. That's when it all stops. So which of these reactions happen faster? 13 seconds or 25 seconds? 13 seconds happen faster. So now we know The conditions that we got 13 seconds out of, those were better for the enzyme to work because it ran out of the H2O2 faster. It was the same amount both times. It went through it faster the first test we did. Does that make sense? Thumbs. Thumbs, where are we at? Questions? Go ahead. So I, didn't, I saw on the sheet it was talking about like different pH levels. Yes. So we're going to be testing that. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Questions on the basics of this reaction first. All right. Your experiment, here's what you are doing. You're going to design a re, uh, an experiment that tests this reaction. You want to test the speeds. Remember, we only change one thing at a time. The things you can change, you can change the temperature that reaction happens in using these hot plates. I'm going to have ice in here tomorrow for ice water and thermometers for you to check the temperature and get all kinds of different results. These will be available for you. That's our first one. You can change the pH that this reaction happens on. Here's how you would do it. In that test tube, you're going to have your potato and your hydrogen peroxide, but you're also going to add a squirt of our different pH solutions. This one is a pH of two. Is that an acid or a base? 
pH of two. It's an acid. Two is an acid. This one's seven. Acid or base? Base. Dimitri, what is it? It's neutral. It's neutral. It's right in the middle. pH of seven is neutral. This one's a pH of 12. Acid or base? Base. 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 Right? So in this tube, I would put my potato, and I'd put my square to the pH stuff. Then I would put my hydrogen peroxide in. And I'd see the difference between a pH of 2, pH of 7, and a pH of 12. That's another option. The last option you can do is you can test the concentration. To do that, you'd put different amounts of potato in the tube. This one might have one milliliter of potato. The next one might have two milliliters, and three, and four. And you see how that changes, how long it takes the reaction to work. You're designing this experiment from start to finish. It's just like when you did the what's in your food lab. On that sheet of paper, I have listed all the materials that you can use. And I have all the things you're required to show me. It's just like last time. You need to write me a good lab title. It needs to be specific, and lab titles are not questions. No questions. You need to tell me what the independent and dependent variables are this time. You're going to tell me what the control group in your experiment is. You're going to tell me some constants. I need to see at least four constants. At least four things we're keeping the same. This is what we had the hardest time with on our lab. Spend some time looking at your notes to see what constants are. You're going to write me a hypothesis, a good if, then, because. You're going to make me a list of all the materials you're going to use. I don't want you to just copy this list. You're not going to use all this stuff. What are you going to use? You're going to write me a procedure. Remember, your procedure has to be so good that I can go get the English teacher, Mr. Yergert, out from the mobiles. He'll read it and do the exact same experiment that you did. It's got to be that good. We need to make sure that happens. This time you're going to make me a graph. I'm going to help you set up your graph tomorrow. <coughs> I will do that with you. It's a little trickier this time. I will help you. And then you're going to write me a conclusion without the conclusion template. Everything up to the procedure, and including the procedure, needs to be done before you walk in the door tomorrow. Has to be done, just like the what's in your food lab. Because tomorrow we're going to run our experiment, we're going to make our graph, and we're going to make our conclusion. Everything else gets done today. On the back of this lab sheet is your rubric. This is exactly what I put in my hand when I grade you. Use this to help you. This is exactly what I'm looking for. If you can do all these things, you will get a good grade. You have the magic marker right in your hand. If you can check <laughs> off that you're getting tens for all of these, you'll do well. This is exactly how I grade you. So use it to your advantage. I'm giving you how you'll be graded. Read it. Questions for me on what you're doing? Once, twice, okay, Delaney, you can cut it, thank you.